and welcome to the Single Guy channel. We have a very special guest. You might recognize him. You've seen him in some of my other videos. He's actually just got a book coming out. Mr. Dave Parada, how you guys doing? Hey Dave, it's good to see you. So I got your book here. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but first, we have some text messages to get to. So you excited to read through them and give these guys some advice? Yeah, for sure, man. I'm always, I'm always excited to break down some, some text messages. So let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. So uh, this was a uh, one guy who reached out to you, right? Um, his name is, well, well, we'll keep his name out of it. <laughs> um, but why don't you read to us uh, what the message said? So this guy had a Netflix and chill day all set up with the girl, but then she flaked. He tried probing it a little bit again to see what went wrong. Didn't work out. So let's dive in here and see what happened. So we're going to pick up right where they sort of finish organizing the hangout. So he says, yeah, you're right. 25 minutes. See you Tuesday night. Seems like, you know, a solid date confirmation right there. She follows up with looking forward to it. Well, anxiously looking forward to it. Ha ha. And I think for him, this is where he starts going wrong. Um, so he says, don't be, you give off really good energy. She follows up with, I hope so. And then he says, this is where he really starts going wrong. And I find you absolutely stunning. She says, oh, oh, thank you. And then he says, no problem. I'm going to head to bed. Good night. So what do you think about this little exchange here? Cool. Yeah. I mean, the problem is not that this girl was not attracted to him or he, she, he, she doesn't know that he is attracted to her. It's just he feels a little nervous about going over to this guy's place. And what he should have done there is he should have acknowledged that and made her feel more comfortable. But instead, he just went for, I think you're hot and I really want to get with you. That made her more nervous, which is what we're about to see in a little bit and probably came off as a little needy. Yeah, he basically, he also tried to like oversell it. Like, oh no, don't worry. Like, I think you're beautiful. It's fine. Like, that's not, that's not what you want to be doing here, bro. Like you want to be taking the strategy that, that Lloyd just laid out here. Clearly there's something in her head. There's some type of objection. And if you don't address that, then it becomes the elephant in the room, which is probably yeah. why she started getting, you know, more and more distant with her messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the biggest deterrent for why women don't show up to dates is not because they don't like the guy or they're not interested to see them. It, it's because they're scared. You know, the safety is a huge concern, especially when you're going over to a guy's house to Netflix and chill. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's true, man. That that's a fact. So so let's keep it going. She she drops in the good night. Um, then he comes through the next day with a text. Hey, are, are you still good for seven tomorrow? Okay, not, not a bad confirmation text. And she says, there's supposed to be a snowstorm. He says, there's supposed to be a snowstorm warning tomorrow. Do you want to postpone? So right here, I, I don't even like the way he did this. Like if the girl is going to postpone, I, I leave that on her. I wouldn't try to like preemptively, you know, postpone the date. What, what do you think, man? Yeah, it's a little bit like he was expecting her to cancel on him. He was expecting this to not happen. Um, and so he's kind of making up excuses for her to not cancel she's already nervous and he's making up excuses for her. it's very likely that he's not going to see this girl um and she's not going to show up the timestamps. he sent the first confirmation text around 4 p.m and then the second conversation uh, the, the second confirmation text uh or, or that postponed one around 6 11 p.m so he waited about two and a half hours you can tell he's probably getting cold feet like oh no she's not going to respond let me just toss this out there and see if she wants to, to postpone it uh, so I think a little bit of that is going on there too. And she probably picked up on that. All right. So then she follows up with, sorry, I just got home from work. There is. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. Maybe then. So th this is a perfect example. She didn't even know the snow, the snowstorm was coming. You probably didn't even need to mention it there. If it does snow the next day, then that's when you could bring it up. You don't need to do it as a way to try to save things. And yeah, she didn't even know what was going on there. Uh, so he follows up with, how about we play it by ear and see how it is? If not, would Thursday work? And she says, my next day off is Friday. Uh, and he says, Friday actually works better for me. Same time. Doesn't hear back from her that day. And it looks like the next day says, if you're too nervous, then I'd understand. So what do you think about how this, how this all kind of came to a head? Cool. I mean, he, he never really addressed the primary concern, which is that she doesn't feel comfortable going over straight to his place. Um, and what he could have done instead was he could have made maybe come up with another idea for them that would have been a little bit less um, like just coming over and Netflix and chilling. <laughs> it could have been, you know, hey, let's get a coffee. Hey, let's meet at a neutral location or something like that where you feel a little safer. 
he didn't do any of that sort of stuff. And honestly, too, there's actually a trick that I would do for situations like this. If you're encountering someone who's a little bit, feels a little nervous or uncomfortable um, with a situation, honestly, if you just talk about normal stuff and just have like an, like an easy, uh, lighthearted, fun conversation, that actually does a lot to make a woman feel just more comfortable with the situation. But if you're constantly pressing for a meetup and pressing for the same meetup that she's not comfortable with, then expect to get ghosted. Yeah, there's, there's no tension going on in this whole conversation at all either. I don't know if there was tension before. I'm guessing if it was this type of exchange, like there probably wasn't either. Well, so, there must have been something because she did agree to go over at some point. So, you know, maybe there was or wasn't. I don't know. I haven't seen it. But I, I would think there might have been something there. I would hope so. I would hope so. But, uh, it's yeah, we're, we're not really sure. But, but yeah, and then, and then that last message, like, if you're too nervous, then, I, uh, then I'd understand. Like, like, like that just kind of hits it home where it's like, man – this whole thing just kind of fell apart there. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, just, it's just not, it's just not a good way to end it. Not a very confident way to kind of end it. Right. And it sounds like he's, he was, a, he's nervous about uh, blowing his chance. And when you're kind of in that category, then it's really easy to, women can pick up on that. Yeah. So I think the main takeaway, when, it, when a girl gives you an objection, figure out what she's actually objecting to and address that versus just trying to, to do it, do whatever, uh, do whatever he was doing here, which is just kind of comb right through it. So yeah, address that. A little nervous, dude, just talk to her objection you're gonna get. like banter with her for a little bit, have fun with her. You know, when she gets more comfortable with you, then she's going to be, she's going to be down for that stuff. Like I regularly have girls come straight over. Um, if it's even, if it's a girl who I got off of hinge or something like that. And it's because I build rapport in the same way, you know, maybe organizing a FaceTime call or something like that would have been good. So, you know, there's a lot of options that you can turn that will make a girl feel more comfortable to even come straight over to your place. It sounds crazy, but we know we live, especially with the lockdowns and everything like that's a very viable option. Um, probably the best option in some cases. For sure. Now, speaking of doing some FaceTime or some Zoom dates, like you just mentioned, our next text exchange, it, that's, that's exactly what the guy is trying to do. And, and this one is from B. B basically is trying to move this girl from Hinge to a Zoom or a FaceTime date and, and have that sort of that face-to-face -face interaction. He gets a little bit of pushback, doesn't handle it really the right way. And it just kind of falls apart. He ends up getting a little bit, of, he ends up getting a little bit needy. So, so the first message, then you must try to use those skills on me. Ha ha. By the way, I would love to continue this conversation through the phone. How does that sound? She said through the phone as in texting. He says, you were, you were close. So I will give it to you. Ha ha. I enjoy the song of ice and fire novels by, by George R. R. Martin. Have you read them before? Yeah. So we can do a zoom. And then she says, I'm not comfortable with the Zoom or with a call or Zoom yet. I haven't read them, but I do own the first Game of Thrones book. So, I, I mean, I, I would say the first thing here is like, bro, you're trying to like weave this Game of Thrones conversation into you asking her for a Zoom call at the same time. There's too much going on there, bro. When, you, when you're when you going to go for the any type of hangout, have that, that should be the singular focus, not like some type of side conversation, right? I don't know what they were talking about before. I don't think he's doing anything super wrong, um, but I feel like he's definitely jumping the gun. So, so from there, though, she says she's not, she's not comfortable with it. So for you, like, how do you usually handle, handle these types of things when a girl gives you pushback like that? Cool. Uh, it depends how much I like her, honestly. But uh, if you really like the girl and you want to keep talking, maybe you jump the gun a little bit. I'm like, cool, no worries. And then we just continue into a normal, fun conversation. A lot of times what builds connection, number one, is familiarity. So the more familiar she gets with you, the more you guys talk, like chances are she's going to be more comfortable with it later. Now, how long you're willing to wait for that is up to you. And honestly, if you're just talking about nothing, then I don't really see that to be a good use of your time. So we'll see how long it takes for this guy to get to a comfortable point where she's actually willing to do um, you know, a FaceTime call with him or something like that. Um, but I think he could have started out by just getting the phone number first and then texting her for a little bit, getting off the app. And then that's a smaller step that she might be more comfortable with first. No, I, I definitely agree. Now, so, so later on, he actually does get the number. Like he pushes for the number, he gets it. Yeah. So, so, so this is, this is the second conversation. It's a little bit later on in the convo when he already has a number. So mm -hmm. he says, nice. Haha. Well, what have you been doing with work? Helping people conquer the world one day at a time, I hope. She says, nope, haha, ha, people can be very mean about us not finding their one tiny book in a two-floored bookstore and then take it out on me. 
and any recommendations I make are dismissed and not even looked at. Then he comes back. It is time for us to fix that. Ha ha. I got, I got to send my best agents down to the library to straighten them out. By the way, would you be down to do a Zoom call for this weekend or next week? And then again, she says, I'm not comfortable with that. Uh, and then he follows up, no worries. Would you feel comfortable doing one at a later point? She says, possibly. I don't know. So, so what, what do you think about this, this little exchange here? Gotcha. Well, she doesn't look like – I can tell by the way she's talking, like she's being a little fake. She's not really asking him a whole lot of questions in return. He's basically pulling this conversation all up on his shoulders. His back must be hurting because <laughs> he's carrying this conversation on his back. That's not really where you want to be. You want to have her come to you a little bit more and put in a little bit of effort. So it's no shocker that she says she's not comfortable with that. So what I would do if I was him is honestly, I would go talk to a girl who is going to be more interested in him. And maybe he can turn to some of the other videos that you have, Dave, and I have as well, where we talk about how to build up some momentum over text because he hasn't built up any momentum and there wasn't that much of a connection there to start with. So I don't really, um, unless that happened, that I really only saw one answer coming to this, which is that she's not down for a, for a FaceTime or a Zoom call. I'm surprised she responded at all, actually. Yeah, no, there's really no connection here. They're basically just bullshitting about her job and, and he's, he's trying to make it funny, but it's not, it's not really hitting. Uh, and then again, like he, he again tries to weave in two different conversations to like asking her, asking her for the Zooms. Like, bro, just be singular if you're gonna ask her to hang out. Just, just have that be the only thing. Don't, don't try to like fluff it up with some, with some funny, some funny quit. Just ask her to hang out, bro. Uh, and, I, and I know, you know, me and you have like two slightly different perspectives on this, but when a girl for the second time, if she says, oh, I'm not comfortable with doing a Zoom call, or I'm not comfortable with hanging out. You know, sometimes I like to set a boundary there and be like, hey, like, like listen, it's fun talking to you, but I'm not really on this app to, to text. Um, if you're down to meet up and hang out, that's cool. Let me know. Uh, and then at that point, either it'll be over or she'll respect that boundary and say, okay, cool. Like, like let's hang out then. When are you free? Or you can ask her that, you know, whatever it may be. But at, at, that, at least at that point, you have some finality to it versus just, just all this BS. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, for me, and, and that's something, if you feel like you need a little bit of finality, I think you should send that message. But for me, I mean, it, the, the message has already been sent. It's final. Like, this is done. Um, I think you should move on to a girl who is going to play ball with him a little bit more, who is going to show more interest. And I wouldn't even have wasted my time with that last message, which, can, you know, it can sometimes come off a little bitter. Um, but yeah, if you feel like you got to set that boundary, I think it's definitely a good thing to send. Um, one thing that I think we could talk about a little bit is maybe give this guy a little positive encouragement because, you know, sometimes we get a little negative by talking about the things that they do wrong. Um, one thing that he, he did do right was that he was trying to be trying to move from the phone number to sorry, from the dating app to the phone number. And then after that, to a FaceTime call, that's a pretty reasonable transition. Um, what I would recommend that you do to improve is maybe split up his text messages a little more, talk about things rather than like a Game of Thrones book that he's into, actually talk about her personality and things like that, or, or relationships. Those conversations can have a lot more impact and be, give you a lot more room to flirt with. So you can have fun with her. You can actually build up some tension. And then from there, she's much more likely to want to get on a call with you because you guys have built up some connection there rather than just, you know, talking with these long messages that, uh, that to me seemed pretty ingenuine. I definitely agree, man. And when it's more, when you're having the conversation more about the two of you versus about something else, it's a lot easier to build that connection. Yeah. One thing that you can do is if you guys are worried about talking about stuff, like honestly ask her about a photo that she has in her profile picture or send something uh, to her about something that you've done. And then what you want to do is you want to acknowledge what she said tell a little story about it, and then ask a follow-up question with that as well, too. And she should follow the same format. But if she's not really asking about you, if you're the one who's carrying this conversation on your back, and then you try and go for a FaceTime meetup, uh, she's probably going to say no. And, you know, it's it's because she hasn't even been playing ball from the get-go. Like, you've probably been wasting your time for even before then. Facts. Cool. All right. Well, honestly, guys, hopefully you got a lot out of this. I mean, like we get conversations like this all the time. And at the end of the day, like it is a two way street. So you can do everything right over a dating app or texting a girl and she might not be down and that's OK. Um, but as you get better and better about this, you're going to learn how to let the girls come to you a little more. You're going to learn how to actually filter for women that are going to be wasting your time. And you're going to be dealing with this frustration a lot less, especially if you work with guys like me and Dave. And uh, if you buy... <laughs> Dave, I got your book right here, The Lifestyle Blueprint. Uh, how to be a high value guy is something that 
really eliminates a lot of these problems, I think. And you don't know this, Dave, but I'm actually, one of the reasons why we became friends was I saw your blog before you even started YouTube and everything. Um, and I saw the life that you were living and I was really inspired by it. And that's actually one of the reasons why I started this channel today. So um, yeah, I think you're a great person to be talking about that sort of stuff. Oh, that, that's, that's awesome, man, for sure. And, and uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of guys don't, a big part of dating is building a solid lifestyle for yourself. That That's going to make you more attractive to girls and also make you feel just freer as a person. You know, you're going to enjoy life a lot more versus just living a life that society lays out for you and tells you that you should live, right? Be, like, you know, deciding to live an intentional life. That's what I've always done. It's awesome to see you do that too, man. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for situations like the text messages that we just talked about, if you're inviting a girl into a cool life that you live, you're not going to be getting these, oh, I'm not, I won't even sign on for a Zoom call, or I won't even, like, be willing to leave my house to meet up with you. Like, you're not going to be dealing with that that much, because they're going to, they're actually going to be chasing you. Um, and so if people want to get this book, if people want to learn how to live this lifestyle, what can they do, Dave? Of course, yeah. So it'll be linked up in the description as well as it'll be on Amazon too. If you just search the lifestyle blueprint, um, you'll be able to see it. You can get it for just 99 cents for the next few days when this video comes out. Um, so yeah, it's, it's basically free. You can just hop in, go grab it and start living an awesome lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, that's a solid deal. Cool. Dave. Thanks a lot for coming on this program and hopefully we'll see you soon, man. Yeah, for sure, man. I got to get out there to Texas again. <laughs> yeah. You got to come back, man. It's good to see you. <laughs> All right. Later, man.